My first impression is I'm thinking of 1959. I was in this room. I see all you guys sitting out there <laughs> look, looking like that and so on. And it doesn't seem that far away and, and so on. But it's just wonderful for me. Well, thank you all for that very warm welcome. I'm proud of U of T and thankful I'm Canadian. Greetings, Pres Professor Andrews. Good day, President Gertler. Bonjour, Principal Roberge. Hello, graduates, parents, relatives, friends, collaborators, Matthew, Julia, Cynthia, and my dear wife, Flory. My wife and I are a team. That's important to, for many of you to remember when, when you have partners. I'm delighted that my now 103 years old University of Toronto Schools mathematics teacher, W. Bruce McLean, is up here with me. What an honor. An academic life is made up of teaching, research, and service. Today I will focus on the diversity part of service. Toronto. Toronto is perhaps the most multicultural city in the world. About half its population is foreign born. Many times riding the streetcar to school, I used to feel that I was the only native English speak speaker uh, on, 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 the, on, the, on the car on board. I loved it. I was already traveling the world. I learned the importance of learning foreign language out of that, languages out of that also. New College. New College pursues a mandate around equality and social justice. Three quarters of its students are new Canadians. My university, Berkeley, also is multinational. I've had 42 doctoral students coming from 25 different countries scattered around the globe so far. You graduates have moved on from elementary school and high school and are now leaving college. It's a day to enjoy and to thank the many people that have helped you along the way. Today is a graduation day for me as well. I take this chance to thank the many people and institutions that helped me get here. My father died when I was six months old. My mother structured my education after that. Thankfully, we had a large, loving, extended family around us. That's, that's how I, we survived. As I grew up, I had many jobs, including caddying, folding clothing at Simpsons. Some of you haven't heard of Simpsons, perhaps. It disappeared. And delivering drugs on my bicycle. Picture that, a 14-year-old delivering drugs on a bicycle. <laughs> I was fortunate enough to attend the best high school in the country, University of Toronto Schools. And then I went on to the best university in the country, University of Toronto. Here today, I'm in my neighborhood. This is my enclave. I was born in the nearby Wellesley Hospital. I rode the streetcar down here so many times and then walking along, walked along Bloor Street to get to the schools and later to, to the University of Toronto. Now, when I was an undergrad, the president, Claude Bissell, said, don't be well-rounded, be angular. I'll say it again. Don't be well-rounded, be angular. That's my advice, too. I love that idea. It became my motto and led to many wonderful adventures. For example, taking the subway to my hotel in Tokyo from the tame, train depot, even though he said, take a cab. Another was walking along a dock in the Brazilian jungle uh, in a different direction from the rest of the tour. Some boards gave way, and I was in the Amazon with the piranhas. I climbed out quickly. Some Japanese tourists screamed. My wife, Lori, came around a corner, unsurprised, and took my picture. <laughs> Boas Brasileiros, Boas Sorch. That's for the World Cup. Uh, ethnicity and diversity I want to talk about now. I come from a socially aware place called Berkeley, sometimes People's Republic of Berkeley. New College, Dakota's principal, has a definite affinity with Berkeley and a long history of activism. Perhaps that's why some of you enrolled. Activision is definitely why I had a postdoc and then a lectureship at the London School of Economics in, in the 60s. Now I am my Berkeley department's equity advisor. That feels natural since in the early 1900s, my father was born in China, son of a pharmacist, Canadian Methodist missionary. And interestingly, my mother-in-law was also born there, a daughter of an American Methodist missionary. Ni hao. <laughs> <laughs> on return, um, 
Laurie's grandfather, Laurie's my wife, had a position at Northwestern University. When he had some African-American students to dinner in 1933, his position was taken away. In 1935, he became Chicago director of the National Conference of Christians and Jews. My wife grew up an activist influenced strongly by that background. Throughout the years, she and I have strongly supported many ethnic and diverse causes. Returning to the U of T and UCB, there are many characteristics in common. Their public history, their strong programs, and their loud protests, and their proud graduates. They both see diversity as a defining feature and as a source of strength. They clearly succeed with their core missions of public service, teaching, and research. One of your ex-presidents, Robert Bergenau, has just retired as Berkeley's chancellor. Soon after arrival in Berkeley, he remarked that he was shocked to discover that the diversity and camaraderie across cultural lines he had seen here at Toronto was not replicated at Berkeley. Chancellor Bergenau set out to change that situation, and now we have a division of equity and inclusion led by a vice chancellor with equity advisors in each department who are required to saw, sign off at each stage in the, in the search procedures. Now something about research. Back at Princeton in 1962, as a lecturer, I worked with John Tukey, FRS, on, a, on developing a large-scale election projection model, and I had a joint appointment at Bell Telephone of Laboratories. The position of member of technical staff at, at, at the labs was the best job I ever had. LSE was a lot of fun, but too much economics and too little data. When I was at the labs, there were countless momentous projects in the air. Analog signals becoming digital, digital signals becoming analog, fast computing algorithms and exploratory data analysis under development. There were lasers, microwaves from the universe, and radiation measuring sat satellites in orbit. Office doors were wide open. Workday lunches were round tables with unpredictable predictable topics. There were renowned visitors, and there were, was attending conferences. Project I worked on included developing a digital-based vocoder, pitch detection, and exploratory time series analysis. But Murray Hill, the Bell Labs location, was in the middle of New Jersey. After a couple of years, my wife and our young son and I headed back to London. We received a fraction of the salary, but that was not an issue. Take risks is going to be one of the pieces of advice I'd give. Projects I've worked on since moving to Berkeley include probability of space debris hitting a space station, cloud seeding, climate change, animal trajectories, risk analysis. Risk analysis was part one example was evaluating a risk analysis done by some engineers of the Valley Cetos reactor. It made medical isotopes, and they'd, someone had found an earthquake a fault going right near it. Well, they, that, that analysis was a shambles. I couldn't believe it. There were just it's er, errors in the arithmetic, even. And there were three uh, commissioners, and one of them voted not to open it up, and the other two voted open up, but it never opened. So Chalk River gained a lot out of that. That was the main US uh, place making the, the, the isotopes. I'll also, I've worked on fluctuations in temperatures along a moving fire in a wind tunnel, sports statistics, including leaf successes. They do exist, believe me. <laughs> Benefits included getting to drive a dog team in Alaska, that was fun. Becoming a foreign member of the Brazilian Academy of Science, that was fun. Walking out of an office naval research workshop on the effect of strong signals on will behavior, that was necessary. They wouldn't let me ask any questions. A statistical scientist not asking questions, that's really a new one. OK, some reasons for becoming a statistical science. Keeper of the scientific method, that's who we are. Collaborator with scientists of all fields player of important roles in government and business, winner of arborants, and if not a winner, a tire. We learn how to challenge anything, and we are, are set for people challenging us back. Discovering new data types, we're handlers of error analysis, we're controllers of risk, and contributors to, to society. Next, where might you graduates end up? That's the question. I hope you'll have magic ears, but you're entering a workplace that is very different from the one that my cohort entered. It includes having science uh, a, a training, having, having scientific publicity training, big data sets, cloud environments, boot camps, MOOCs, project-based, and e-learning. You will also find teams, short courses, interdisciplinary co collaboration, live data streams, multiple career paths, 
No more one project, one so scientist operations and team authored papers. I hasten to add that we had all of that at Bell Labs in the 60s. That place was really wonderful. Graduates, be passionate about your career. I have been throughout mine. Some people snicker at the idea of a passionate statistician, but they don't know what, what we do. You'll experience joy and, and discouragement, but please treasure diversity. Be angular, remember that remark. Question authority, don't be afraid to ask, what happens if I don't? That's important, don't, just because someone says something, don't, to, you're to do something, don't be shy, shy, shy of saying, what happens if I don't? Protest injustice, do not give in, Learn mathematics, that's the hardest part of the other subjects. Look for the simplest solution, take risks, have fun, put on the sunscreen, and please fix the leaves. <laughs>